Okay, great. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and congratulations as well for your 40th event. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, participate. Again, my name is Nicole Hamlin and um, I'm a sales director here at Intermap. And I've been with the company for almost 20 years and I work with partners and customers around the world solving all kinds of geospatial challenges, including in the mining industry. Uh, my company, Intermap, um, we're a 3D geospatial uh, acquisition and services and analytics provider, and we were established back in 1997, but through various mergers, we actually have a history going back over 100 years to the first aerial imaging survey company called Pennsylvania Aero Service Corporation. And back in 1997, we acquired a sensor from DARPA called IFSAR, and that stands for Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar. And this is a dual antenna sensor that we mount on airplanes to collect digital elevation models and orthorectified radar imagery. And as an airborne system that flies at high altitude, uh, we're very well suited for collecting uh, wide areas such as whole countries or whole provinces with the IFSAR sensor. Along with the IPSAR sensor, we also produce digital elevation models with a proprietary AI machine learning uh, production system that we created. So with those two things, the IPSAR and our AI machine models, uh, we're able to generate digital trained data all over the world, and we do have a global database available for your projects. Um, a little bit more information about digital elevation models and some initial considerations. There are different collection technologies. I spoke about Intramaps IFSAR. That's an airborne system. There's also spaceborne systems, LIDAR, photogrammetric, and ground surveys. And there are two types of digital elevation models. There's a digital surface model and a digital terrain model. A digital surface model, or DSM, is what you see there on the top in the, the, the top picture. That's an elevation model that includes the heights for features above the ground, such as trees and buildings. And a digital terrain model has those features removed, leaving just the bare earth. And these two kinds of models are useful for a, a very large uh, array of different kinds of use cases. The digital surface model, for example, is great for viewshed analysis, while the DTM um, with those surface features removed is typically the model chosen for hydrological applications such as flood mapping. So when you're looking at a, di a digital elevation model or you're helping a customer with a, a digital elevation model project, you're a consultant, um, it's important to consider what stage they are in, in, the, in the project. So are they in the exploration stage or are they going into production or reclamation, for example? You want to consider the resolution, accuracy, and vintage of the data that you require and what your budget is. These things will vary depending on the, on the stage of the project. Um, I'll focus in here, I think, for today's presentation on the exploration phase and some preliminary planning use cases. Um, our IFSAR sensor, as I mentioned, it flies at high altitude and it's, um, it's intended for wide area collection, such as whole countries. So uh, we're very well suited to work with national governments for the collection of uh, national scale base maps. So base maps for their whole country, which they can use for things such as environmental management and to increase public access and transparency, as well as provide services for mining exploration, uh, exploration firms and their providers. Um, we also, uh, provide our digital elevation models at the exploration and, and early planning stages for feasibility studies. So that would include things such as environmental baseline studies, which feed into environmental impact assessments, and for earth rectification of imagery, and for uh, estimating inf various infrastructure costs, such as uh, building out a road, like an access road to get to the mine, um, or building up a wireless communication network around the mine, and earth volume calculations, for example. Um, it's also really great as a foundation layer for historical analysis, uh, for validation of historic records, such as historic drill collar locations, and for pre and post uh, mining topography changes. And uh, I thought it'd be good to kind of just drill down a bit more into a, a very specific use case. Um, 
in the exploration phase, and that would be gravity map normalization, or more specifically, gravity anomaly map normalization. So gravity maps are collected with special sensors that are either on the ground, or they could be on a helicopter, or on a, on a ship. And what they do is they sense uh, the gravity um, where the, the sensor is located, and geophysicists use this to measure the density of various uh, geo uh, uh, geological bodies under the ground. So this could be um, a fault, or it could be an aquifer, or it could be various kinds of uh, minerals. Um, and an anomaly can be something, as the, for example, called a dike, or a, a fault, as I mentioned, or um, um, a diatreme. Um, so you have anomalies that you detect in the, the densities you want to understand uh, beneath the surface of the ground. And so you use a gravity map to do that, and it helps geophysicists locate where would be good locations for a mining operation site. Um, there's a challenge, though, with gravity maps that the, the surrounding topography around the sensor will impact the readings of that sensor. So uh, mountains, for example, will impact or increase the the readings um, of the gravity at that sensor and, val and valleys, for example, will do the opposite and decrease the value of the gravity readings around the sensor. Um, so you, you want to compensate or normalize the map for the surrounding terrain so that you can remove that distortion and get an accurate reading of the uh, subsurface materials and minerals under the ground. Um, and so I, I think with that too, I'd have a poll question that uh, Muthu, if you could pop that up. Um, I'd like to see uh, who here in the crowd might know uh, where gravity is strongest. Is the gravity strongest at the poles or is it strongest at the equator? Um, this might be an easy question for some of you. Um, some of you, it might be a new question, um, but that will be interesting to see people's answers there. Um, but back to normalization of the gravity map, um, you want to normalize that. So you can use terrain data to do that. So basically, you would use a terrain model to remove the distortion from the surrounding terrain around the sensor. Um, and we had a customer recently who had this challenge. They had a gravity map that they needed to normalize, um, but it was in a remote location and there was inadequate public data. They also had a small budget and a short deadline. Uh, so they needed to get an answer quickly and an answer better than what they could get from public data. So um, given that we have a global a global library of, of, of elevation models to choose from, we were able to uh, turn around an answer for them in a couple of days. Uh, so that is an example of how a, a, um, a digital terrain model is used in mining exploration. And I think that concludes my uh, presentation for today. Um, just some brief information about uh, what digital elevation models are, how they're collected, some things to consider in the exploration stage. Um, and then I also encourage the audience to check out Geo Awesome and F42's paper in Earth Observation Mining. There's some really great information there. As well, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to contact me. And again, thank you uh, for the time today and I appreciate the opportunity.